Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Efreda, Washington, and I am going to take a couple of minutes to tell you about fusible applique and show you how to make a couple of my favorite Christmas projects. <laughs> Fusible applique is one of those techniques that every quilter should feel comfortable with. It's a classic technique that will make all of your labels and gift getting, gift giving items way, way easier to complete. So even things like just gift cards or gift bags you can put together with just a little bit of fabric and uh, a little bit of fusible applique. If you're making baby gifts, having some little design that you can that you can fuse down, stitch around to turn to turn any blanket, any piece of minky into something that is unique and specific for that person. And even towels, pillowcases, throw pillows, pot holders, all of these things are done with fusible applique. For one second, I just want to do a little commercial about this book. This is a $16 book, and it's got 52 designs in it. All sorts of things from every holiday, every season. Anything that you'd like for a pot holder, a kitchen towel, a little minky throw, a pillow, a pocket on an apron, all sorts of options. It's just a really nice one to have it for you to have at your fingertips and I use this one all the time. All right, I'm going to show you just the basics of fusible applique. All you really need is your fabric. You need a little bit of fusible web, which we'll talk about in just a second, a pencil, a pen, and then your pattern. Fusible web. There's lots of different products, lots of different brands. I tend to like Steema Seam because it is double stick and it comes in a variety of sizes. Um, there are some that you have to sew through. There are some that are no sew. And if it says no sew, that means that once you fused it down, you don't want to sew through it. I tend not to use that because I want my items to be washable, wearable, usable. And so I don't like that stiffness that's created by the no sew brands. So um, Steam a Seam comes with a, I'm going to take this paper off, comes in a double stick or a single stick. It comes light or it comes regular and it always has all of the directions, both in terms of um, photos and also written directions in three different languages. This particular one is the 18 inch wide. You can get as many yards as you would like. It also comes 12 inches wide, as many yards as you would like, or you can get it in a package that's eight and a half by 11, and what's really nice about that is if you don't wanna do the tracing, you can just run it right through your copy machine. So, what you do, and I just always keep a bunch of this in my sewing room, is you cut this off and you can see that it has a grid on one side and no grid on the other side. It does that because it just gives you an opportunity to do some measuring. This grid is a one inch grid. So if you know specifically what size you need, you'll be able to measure that out before you cut that off. There isn't necessarily a right side or a wrong side. What will happen is when you bend this to release it, you just want to make sure that you know where that part is coming. I'm gonna lift that up so you can see. Do you see that? That is the part that's going to be on the wrong side of your fabric that's going to turn it into an iron-on. So your release paper it could be on this side or it could be on the other side. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you know where that is because the two pieces of paper that surround that get thrown away. So what you're going to do, you do need to use a pencil. The reason you need to use a pencil is because ink will skip. But all you have to do is lay this over the top of whatever it is you're drawing. I'm not sure if you can see this through the camera, but I'm going to trace my holly leaves and it looks like I have three of them and once I've traced all three 
I'm going to rough cut around it. And then I'm going to peel off the back side. Again, making sure that the part that's sticky is with my pattern piece. So I'm going to peel that off and put this on the wrong side of my fabric. I happen to be using batik, so there isn't necessarily a wrong side, but I'm going to put it right here. Go to my iron and iron it down. Once I've done that, and again, you might not be able to see it from where you are, I'm going to go ahead and just cut right on that line. And I'll cut out each of my individual pieces. And that's what creates my little iron-on. When I peel this off, what's left is a unit that is iron-on. So I'll go ahead and keep doing that for all of my pieces and then what I'll do is, you can see the finished one, I'll take my towel and I'll layer everything. So if I've cut out my hat first, I'll lay my hat, lay everything else down, get everything right where I want it to be, iron everything down, and then you do want to go ahead and top stitch. The reason that you have to top stitch is because eventually after about the third washing, this is going to lift off. So you want, it's, it's not really permanent, it's, it's secure, but it's only semi-permanent. So once you've stitched around, and if you want to do a zigzag stitch, like a little satin stitch, if you want to do a straight stitch, if you want to do a decorative stitch, Whatever you'd like, it doesn't really matter. You just want to stitch the whole thing down so that when you go to wash it, everything is going to stay right in place and this kitchen towel will be used again and again and again all through the holiday season. This particular towel we do have with a pattern and a kit for only $4.99 on our website. All you need to do is add whatever color of towel you'd like. I kind of liked the lime green, but you might want something a little bit more calm than that. And that's the same way that you would make any towel. If you wanted to do some other holiday towel, a birthday towel, uh, a, a pot holder, anything like that, you do it all the same way. When you're looking at your pattern, you can see that art, all of the artwork is done, but you know that you're basically exploding it so that you're drawing all of your pieces separately. So you would do all of your circles, you would do your little lines here, you would do whatever colors you're doing for your little ladybug. In this particular book, she gives you all of those directions in the beginning to explain to you how to trace everything and how to layer it all and even how to go ahead and do your binding. So all of the directions are included in there. All right. It's really the same way that this one was done and you can see that there was just a little different stitch. You can go ahead and do a hand stitch if you'd rather do that. And this was just on a piece of minky, so it gives kind of even a nice little design on the back. All you have to do is take this little piece of double-sided fleur, put your applique on there, add a little binding to it, and you have something that's nice and personalized. On a card, if you're doing the same idea, you of course don't have to stitch down because nobody's going to wash this card. If you have a stamp or some other little sentiment you want to put in the inside, it's just a really quick way to make something that's very specific. Another option is to use woven fabrics. Woven fabrics are fabrics that are woven, so there's no right or wrong side. Everything goes all the way through it, so it doesn't have a right or wrong side. And what happens is all of the edges have this nice kind of a, a soft little chenille. So what you can do is, if what you're making is a Christmas tree, if you just come just inside that fused edge and stitch down and allow that edge to fray naturally, it makes a really cool looking Christmas tree or forest tree, whatever it is that you're, whatever look you're going for, but it's not going to fray past where you've stitched. Otherwise, what happens when we've done the 
fusible applique is it actually fuses those edges together and so after you've stitched that down it's not going to fray at all. The last one to show you is something that has been laser cut. Laser cut is uh, a little expensive. You end up paying a premium for it. But what they do is if you have more money than time, instead of tracing that snowflake and cutting it yourself, you can buy, I think there's nine in the package for $11 nine in the package for eleven dollars and they have all been laser cut so they're cut perfectly all ready to go all you have to do is just peel off your back edge and they're ready to fuse down and to use on your project each of our packages have uh, three different three each of three different styles of snowflakes and we have them in three different colors and two different sizes all right, so last little tidbit about fusible web is that it's probably a good idea just to have some iron clean on hand. Um, if for some reason that sticky part of the fusible web gets on your iron, it is a great big hurricane mess and it, there's no easy way to get it off. Water and soap and water won't take it off, but this is a specially treated sheet. It looks like a dryer sheet, it is not a dryer sheet. It's not at all the same thing, but it just looks like that because it has this this chemical that is in this little sheet. So if your iron happens to get really dirty and nasty, all you do, I take this over to the edge of my mat, take my hot iron, and I just run it down along the side like that. And that's it. You don't really have to pause for too long. You don't want to take this and touch the iron. You'll burn your fingers. You just do that. And once you've done that, you can see that whatever dirty was on the iron, you can see that it's now on my little sheet there. But once I've cleaned it, I might have to repeat that two or three times. Let that just kind of air out. And then you can see that I can use this same sheet probably eight to 10 times. So one package of 10, which is pretty inexpensive. It's under $5. It will last you and a friend probably uh, a lifetime of sewing. So it's just a good way to keep your iron clean and I always keep it on hand right near my iron in case I have any kind of fusible web mishaps. The other thing that's nice to have is a pressing sheet. They come in a variety of different colors and sizes, but if you know that something is sticky and you know that you have an edge showing, just put it inside this or underneath that because this is a Teflon sheet and so what will happen is it'll stick to this. You can just kind of wipe it off or peel it off and it won't stick to your iron or to the surface that you're ironing on. So this is also nice to have and I also keep this. I have it in a couple different sizes and I also keep that near my iron. All right, so let's talk about have a happy howdy, have a howdy holiday. And so this is a pattern by Heidi Pridemore. We do have it available for purchase um, as just a pattern or a download. We also have it uh, packaged with a bunch of different kits that we've put together for you. This is just a really popular pattern. It's really cute. It comes out this size as written in the pattern. You could add a couple of more borders if you feel like you want it to be larger. But what I find for the holidays is it's nice to have a soft quilt, maybe with a minky backing or a flannel back, something just to have on the couch and ready when people come over if you're if it's kind of chilly outside. So this one is really nice, but the entire thing is fusible applique. You can hand applique if that's what you'd rather do and you can stitch things down, but for me, all this is is a bunch of almost like paper dolls. Uh, just trace, iron, cut it out, lay it down, iron it down and you're good to go. Now, for me, instead of stitching everything down and then putting it on the long arm, I'm going to put this on the long arm and I'm going to quilt everything around it as I'm quilting through all of my layers. It's just easier for me to do it that way. Uh, I'm, I feel comfortable on the long arm doing it, but 
you can finish it off however you want to. You do just want to make sure that you stitch down all of these edges. If you don't, again, by the third washing, things will start to lift up. All right, so your pattern, super, super simple. Let me show you this kit before I get this out of the way. The way that we have our, our kits packaged is we have our background. We have a really nice border that we've picked out. They're all a little bit different, but I think the pictures can kind of show you pretty well what, what you've got in there. These are your two outer borders, well, your three outer borders. And then some, we might have five different colors for the tree, like the one behind me, or like on the pattern, there's just two different colors for the trees. So this is the tree, this is your little bit for your, your um, trunk, and then all of the colors that you'll use for your Christmas balls, for your ornaments, and then your star. You do have enough in here for your binding, but you will need two and three quarter yards, yards for backing in the size shown. If you want to make it larger, you can get a little extra fabric for that. All right, I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm just going to show you the one teeny tiny little trick. So again, this pattern has all of the directions for completing it and you have two pattern pages in here for your tracing. So this one has all of your little ornaments and the star on the top. You can see as you look at this that you can really decorate it however you'd like to and the pattern kind of says that. Just She tells you how many to go ahead and cut out and you can do it exactly the way that she did or you can mix it up just a little bit. So we have all of the ornaments. And then the other one, and this is what I wanted to spend just one minute telling you about, is how to do the tree. So if you look at this, you can see that you only have two pieces, right? So you have a bow, and then you have, I guess I would call that a swag. So if you look at this, you have a bow, and then you have a reversed one. You have a bow, that center unit, and a reversed bow. Same thing here. This one, there's two and this one there's two. So what's gonna happen when you trace this, I'm just gonna show you up close how to trace this. It's super simple. All you're gonna do is lay this out. You might not be able to see, see through my fusible web here. but maybe you can see my pencil. Can you see that? Yeah. So there's my first bow. I'm just going to line this up. There's my center. And then now I'm just going to flip this over. And if you can't see, if you can't see on the back side, all you have to do is just take a Sharpie marker of some sort, trace over that so that it's a little bit darker. And even if you still have to trace on this side, so you can see the reverse. And then maybe you could see it a little bit better Lay that out. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but there is my bow, my center, and my outer. And that's how you would do it to make this large piece so first let me show you when you rough cut it, the reason that you don't come all the way up to the line is because again, you want, you want the edge of your fabric to have the benefit of all of that fusible web on it. That's what's going to prevent this edge from fraying is because all of those frayed edges have all been glued together with the fusible web. So you don't want to cut on that line until after you've ironed this to the wrong side of your fabric. But the other thing that you can do, it will not only save on your fusible product, but um, it would make your quilt less stiff, is to come in here in the inside edge and cut out 
everything except for about an inch, maybe even a half an inch around the edge. You don't have to measure it. You can just kind of eyeball it. But then what will happen is you still have the benefit of having something that is sticky. So I'm going to iron this to the wrong side of my green fabric and cut that out. And then what will happen is it will be sticky all the way around the outside edge, but not on the inside, which is okay. I don't need all of that bulk there. I'm just going to go ahead and sew that down anyway. And then I have that inside part that I've cut out, and I can go ahead and use that for maybe a few of my ornaments. It's an option. Some people will suggest that you do this. I don't necessarily feel like this is super stiff. I do like the light brand because of that. The other thing is if I'm going to do it mostly as a wall hanging, I like that it drapes really well because of that fusible web. So it's just another option. All right, I think that's about it. I'm just going to kind of let you get to it. So again, it's called Have a, Happy, Have a Howdy Holiday. Um, it really is a popular pattern. We make it again and again pretty much every year. This particular fabric ha happens to be out of some Kimberbell fabric that we no longer have available, but it's pretty easy to make it out of your own colors and make multiples because it goes together extremely fast. So thanks for watching and join us for several of our other quick Christmas gift ideas. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.